After a bitter court decision last year, the Palestinian families in this house were evicted and Jewish occupants moved in. The transfer of occupants was regarded as a triumph by religious Jews. But an outrage by local Palestinians and Israeli peace activists. The new Jewish residents put up the large menorah candlestick design and the Hebrew words below, which read, and the sons will return home, a well-known biblical phrase from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Across the street through this gate live Saleh, his wife and four kids, and 14 other extended family members, including his mother and father. The government and the settler and the police is together. They don't want Arab here. Saleh begins his story, as many Palestinians do, with the War of 1948. His parents fled from their home in Jaffa and stayed with his mother's relatives near this neighborhood. Nothing they was here Just before. The grass and the... Yeah, only, stre only trees. And they beginning to build 28 houses. The government Jordan, they give him the land. And the Anwar, they're building the houses. They're beginning another life, a new life. But the new life ended with the 1967 war, and a few years later, the court cases started against the occupants of these original 28 houses. They continue the Nakba, the third Nakba. So, so if you see in, in 48, the first time, and 67, and the beginning in 72, to give the, the Palestinian here to, get, to leave and they're beginning to go to court and uh, continue how you see now. Later, his mom sat down with us. She's lived in this house since it was built in 1952. I had a hard time finding a Jewish family to talk to until I realized I was calling the neighborhood by the wrong name. For Jews, it's Shimon HaTzadik, named after the ancient tomb that Jews regard as the center of the neighborhood. Yoni Yosef is the grandson of the Sephardi former chief rabbi of Israel. In this neighborhood, he's known as the boss. I follow Yoni around the corner to the tomb. People come to pray here from all Israel. And who can tell me that is not Jewish uh, capital and this is not a Jewish neighborhood? Liar. Here inside you have Arab men, they change the name. It's yeah. Sheikh Hijazi, they change the Shaman Siddiq. The tomb, whoever's buried inside it, is right behind Saleh's back wall. Eventually, Yoni takes me from the gravesite back to the settler house with the big menorah. How many families live in this building? This building, eight families and one single. Single is the manager of all this uh, neighborhood. We look for someone from one of the families to talk with. None of the women want to talk. Finally, a man comes home and invites us in. I ask him why he decided to move into this disputed house less than a year ago. It was a dream. I had some sort of a dream when I was young. I wanted to, uh, to do something that I felt was a Zionist and I'm a Jerusalem freak. I have to live in Jerusalem. And does he think about the people who used to live here? They had to leave the house. So it wasn't by choice, it was more by force. And therefore, the people that are living across the street now have the same problem. It's not only here, it's all four acres around us. We take uh, house after house because uh, this, uh, this area belongs to the Jewish people and our uh, dream that uh, all uh, uh, East Jerusalem uh, will be like uh, West Jerusalem, Jewish capital of Israel. Mayor Margalit is a Jerusalem city councilman from the left-wing Meretz party. As a member of the city government, he had access to a building plan for Sheikh Jarrah, submitted to the city by a holding company for the settler groups. In this plot of land, they want to build uh, almost uh, 200 houses. 
He means units for 200 Jewish families. For the municipality, this is wonderful because it's exactly what they want. We are not finished the job. We are, we are going to the next neighborhood and after that we will go more. This is the best way for them to undermine any kind of compromise with the Palestinian or any kind of solution in, in the future. Where does the settler organization get the money to pay the court costs and to buy the land? 70% of the money comes from the Israeli government and 30% for, from Jewish living in France or, or in the United States. In some way, yeah, I feel I'm a pawn and I've, I, I, I don't feel that it's all that bad. Sometimes, it's, uh, sometimes you need pawns to do the real work. Mivne le Arisa. And that means? House to be demolished. Ahmed Kure, a former Palestinian prime minister, said recently that rising tension over continued settlement building in the Jerusalem area was a time bomb, eroding trust between the two sides. Which future you have here? In my, as a friend, they tell me I take my children to Elat, I take my children to outside Israel to visit. Okay, but my children, I can't take him anywhere. You're afraid if you go take him to, uh, to visit some place, you come back, you don't have house. You see your uh, life in the street.